Hello everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian Christy here. We've reached another Friday, so of course I have another Film Rec Friday ready for everybody out there. So, February is National Library Lovers Month, and I thought it might be kind of remiss of me not to bring up the fact that not every librarian is a glasses and sweater wearing introvert who drinks tea constantly and loves cats. <coughs> or at least we aren't all that. Anyway, this week's episode is all about unconventional librarians in television and film. These are people who may not have your traditional degrees, they may not serve your traditional public, but they're all at heart true librarians. Uh, as always, these recommendations are available entirely for free with the use of your Mylan Berlin library card. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the recs. Okay, my first recommendation is available on DVD and Blu-ray via our Clevenet service, and it features a librarian who definitely does not have an MLIS degree. He doesn't even really have an official title, but he does embody all these characteristics that we, we really want to see in librarians in our lives. He loves books. He loves the written word and the way the written word can transport you anywhere in the world. He adores knowledge. He loves leading the patrons to the knowledge they're seeking, and he is absolutely dogged in his pursuit of these things. The fact that he and his patrons all happen to be convicts is what kind of sets him apart. I am, of course, referring to Andy Dufresne in The Shawshank Redemption. I absolutely love The Shawshank Redemption. In this film, we follow Andy as he serves out two consecutive life terms in a pretty horrific prison called Shawshank. Um, now, a prison movie about a man serving two consecutive life sentences probably seems pretty bleak, but this film is just one of the most beautiful movies I have ever seen. Uh, it's from 1994 and I still repeatedly have rewatched it. I rewatched it just before filming this uh, and have read the novella on which it's based. The novella is Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption by Stephen King, and it is far and away one of my favorite Stephen King stories, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the things that I usually love about Stephen King. There are no monsters, there are no ghosts, there are no evil twins or child eating clowns. It's just these men trying to figure out how to survive in prison. And it is absolutely phenomenal. So one of the big things about this movie is the acting. The cast, whether we're talking about your two leads or any of the side characters, uh, you know, the fellow prisoners who are on screen for huge chunks of time or for no time at all, we're talking about sadistic guards, greedy wardens, whoever we're talking about, all of these actors are at the absolute top of their game. Andy is played by Tim Robbins and Red, uh, who over the years becomes his best friend, is played by Morgan Freeman and their buddy chemistry is just off the charts. They are brothers in every way you could possibly bro be brothers aside from blood. He, um, they rely on one another f for so many, for so many reasons. And, and all of this shifts continually. You know, we see Andy when he first gets to this prison and this life where he's, you know, trapped behind these walls. And the Andy we meet then is very different from the Andy we meet at the end of the movie. And, you know, we really feel that we earn it as we are watching these years go by. And, you know, Shawshank Redemption, it's, it's right there in the title. Prison is generally not necessarily somewhere you're looking for a redemptive storyline, at least not in the way that this ends up being, but man, uh, there's just the inspiration and beauty all over this thing. There are also incredibly hard, horrific scenes in this as well. It, it, it has so many layers and if you are looking for a film that can offer that and can give you these challenging moments to watch and yet these heartfelt bits and pieces uh, that can give you some of the ugliest things that humanity can dish out, 
versus some of the most beautiful things that humanity can dish out. I mean, this this film is all about those points of juxtaposition. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for that, I 100% I recommend Shawshank. It is gorgeous. It is heartfelt. It is challenging. And it's something that will absolutely stay with you long after the final scenes. Um, it is again available on DVD and Blu-ray. Uh, so make sure you give it a chance and check it out. You won't regret it. All right, my second recommendation is also available on DVD and Blu-ray via Clevenet, and this one features a man who, at least on the surface, seems like your much more stereotypical librarian. Whether we're talking about his wardrobe with his tweed jackets with the patched elbows, or we're talking about his rather stern demeanor, he definitely seems like the kind of librarian you'd find in the stacks of some old storied library on a university campus somewhere. But underneath all of that, he's actually a watcher. A watcher who is sometimes ruthless and incredibly capable, and who is designated to assist the and watch over fate's designated slayer. This is, of course, Rupert Giles from the television series Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I was a massive fan of this TV series when it was out, and it ran from 1997 to 2003. I watched every single season, was a huge, huge fan, and part of that was the Giles character. I really, really loved that librarian. He was just really cool and really unexpected. And the longer you watch the show, just like with anything else on TV, the more you get to know the character, you get to know the backstory and all of these different layers. And, you know, on a show that's really focused on its teen protagonist and all of her Scoobies, the fact that some of the adults play such a major role throughout the entire run of the show definitely says something about those characters. He even has episodes entirely dedicated to him and his backstory, and those are fantastic. And some of them are my favorite episodes of the entire uh, series. I mean, they really just are. Um, Anthony Stewart Head plays Giles. He is uh, very much the perfect person to be cast in this role. I mean, you, you just you get a feel for the character from the very first episodes and he is able to give him so much depth, even though, you know, he's not in the entire episode. It's not like he's the primary character, uh, but every scene he's in, man, he's definitely a focal point. Uh, so anyway, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, shocker, follows Buffy the Vampire Slayer as she traverses uh, a number of years being fate's chosen slayer. There can be only one, except for if you continue on with the storyline, and that's kind of a spoiler, but not. Anyway, it's a topic for another episode. Uh, so Buffy is this teenager living in Beacon Hills who suddenly gains all of these special powers and it's just fate that chooses her. It's not a genetic thing. It's not, you know, passed down from generations. It's not a Van Helsing kind of storyline. Nope. It's just destiny. And the whole concept of destiny is in and out and threaded through so many episodes. Uh, and it becomes this huge thing as time goes along. Now, Buffy is played by Sarah Michelle Gellar and you know, for someone who was pretty much the same age as these characters were supposed to be, like, I was a teenager as Buffy was a teenager. I was going off to college as Buffy was going off to college. I, I guess I really could feel how, you know, all of the different regular teenager things that these characters are going through. And then when you throw the extra layer of like weird vampires and monsters on top of it, it was just so much fun. Plus, you know, for all of the issues that we hear and the controversy we hear about Joss Whedon, you know, his dialogue was great and the writers that he had working for him made incredible storylines. That his, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer is known for its sort of snappy witty dialogue and man it is snappy witty and fabulous 
all the time, like from beginning to end. And the cast does a great job of pulling these one liners and always giving them the right kind of spin. And while none of the actors were necessarily teenagers, well, at the same time, you know, they were already adults, like with most stories like this, um, they were able to sort of hold on to that vibe. You know, they, they didn't feel like they were, you know, miscast in any way. And that's not just Buffy, but like all of her little Scoobies, all of the people in her group of friends who were part of her vampire slaying universe. Um, this series launched a lot of careers, including Sarah Michelle Gellar's, uh, but I mean, David Boreanaz plays a major character within here. You've got Alison Hannigan, who went on to be a massive celebrity within the TV world, How I Met Your Mother. And I mean, there are just many, many people who started in Buffy the Vampire Slayer and went on to really great roles, uh, later on. And, you know, it's definitely one of those shows that I think is still fun to watch today. Periodically, I'll watch some of my favorite episodes, one of which, like I mentioned, features all of this fabulous backstory about this vampire slayer watcher <laughs> and his very, very checkered past. I mean, I love that they give him this hugely checkered past, too. It's just really fun. And, and that's the whole thing with stories like this. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It definitely is like tongue in cheek about a lot of things. You've got meta layers thrown in there. Uh, so if you're looking for something that has elements of horror and it does get like some pretty good horror stuff in there, but you like it layered with a lot of comedy with, you know, some teen angst because I mean, it is a show about teenagers uh, and loads and loads of adventure and action. Definitely make sure you check out Buffy the Vampire Slayer TV series. Again, it ran from 1997 to 2003, and it's available via our Clevenet service on DVD and Blu-ray. Okay, super short episode today, I know, but there are tons of films and TV series out there that feature librarians. I've recommended many before, but if you have any recommendations for those films, please, please, please comment with those below. If you have any recommendations for themes you'd like to see me cover in the future, definitely recommend those. I can always use help there. I really do absolutely love putting these lists together. It's so much fun to go through our catalogs and just see what's out there and available. It's definitely given me a better idea of what I can recommend to patrons and to, to fellow film lovers. Uh, so anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for tuning in and hopefully I will see you next week. Bye-bye.